How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Mr. Donahue here once again. This time we're going to take a look at transmutation equations. So our objectives will be to write out and complete the K equations for natural and artificial transmutations. All right, so these transmutation equations are nuclear reactions. So we have looked at chemical reactions where you worry about balancing how many of each element is on each side, but these are nuclear reactions, so we're not looking at that. We're changing the elements. We have transmutation. We're ending up with new elements. So we're not going to be able to do that. What we are going to do, which is still the same thing that we were doing with chemical equations, is that we're going to want to make sure we balance the masses. So we've got to make sure that the mass we start with is the mass we end up with, and that we got to balance the charges. The charge that we start with also has to be the charge that we end up with. So let's take a look at example problems. Right here is an example problem you might come across. Determine what is represented by x in the following decay equation. And then they give you the decay equation with x in there, and you got to figure it out. So the way I do it is I always use this arrow as kind of my separator. So on the top, I'm trying to balance the mass. So on the left side, I have a mass of 14, which I get from the carbon 14. And on the right, right now I have 0 and some number. So what's that number got to be? This one's kind of easy. It's got to be 14. So that tells me that this number up here for x has got to be 14. And I got to do the same thing for the charge. All right, well, the charge on the left side is plus 6 from the 6 protons in that carbon. On the right side, I have a minus 1 charge from the beta particle. So it's got to be minus 1 and some number. Well, what number? And negative 1 gives me 6. I know, 7. So that right here, this number, has got to be 7. All right, so I'm getting 14 for the mass equals 14 and 0. And then for the charges, I get 6 equals 7 and a negative 1. So what element is that? Well, that's going to be nitrogen. So I know x is nitrogen with a mass of 14. That's how you do that. All right, that's that. A special note. So when we're balancing these equations, you'll need to assume the mass you start with is the same as the mass you end up with. And in reality, a tiny, 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 tiny bit of mass is converted to energy. It's actually, we're losing some mass because it's being converted to energy. If E equals MC squared sounds familiar, that's what's happening right here. All right, so C is a really, really big number. And when you square it, it gets even bigger. So a tiny, tiny M can result in a lot of energy. And this is how nuclear power plants work. It's also how the sun works. That's how the sun gives off all that energy. We have nuclear reactions going on. We're converting a tiny bit of mass into energy. So let's try some practice out. I encourage you, pause it, try it, and then check your answers. All right, welcome back. All right, so let's take a look. Alpha decay of polonium-212. Well, first thing I got to do is figure out what polonium is. So polonium, they tell me the mass is 212, but I got to look up what's its atomic number. So I go to my periodic table, and it shows that polonium has a atomic number of 84. So alpha decay means it gives off an alpha particle right here. And I go, all right, well, what's the new thing? Well, 84, all right, 84 has to equal 2 and some number. Well, that's pretty easy. That's that's 82. All right, and then I got to do the same thing for the mass. 212 equals 4 and some number. Well, that's not too bad either. That's 208, because 208 plus 4 gives me 212. And I look up what element has an atomic number of 82. I'm pretty sure it's lead. I'm hoping it's lead, because I don't feel like checking all right, same thing for this. What is X? Well, let's figure it out. I got 90 equals 2 plus some number. That's going to have to be 88. And what element has an atomic number of 88? Well, that's going to be radon. So I got RA. That's my element. Now i got to check out my mass. I got 232 has to equal 4 in some number. Well, that's not too bad. I can do that math in my head, I think. 228. So that's what X has got to be. All right, taking a look at this one right here. All right, again, I got 93 has to equal 94 and some number. Well, it's going to have to be a negative number to bring 94 down to 93. And 239 has to equal 239 and some number. Well, that some number is going to have to be zero. And I go, well, what is that thing with a negative one charge and a mass of zero? That's a beta particle or an electron. All right, same process, but up here. All right, let's take a look at the charges first. I have six and zero, so that gives me six has to equal four and some number. Well, that's going to have to be a two. Now, let me take a look at the mass. I got 12 and one has to equal nine and some number. 
well, that's going to have to be 4. So what is that with a charge of 2 and a mass of 4? That's going to tell me that it is an alpha particle. There you go. All right, taking a look at this one. I got Einsteinium 99, 253 is its mass, something giving me a neutron, and MD 256. So again, let me take a look. I'm going to start with mass this time. 253 and some number has to equal 1 and 256. All right, well, that's going to tell me that missing mass has to be 4. I'm going to do the same thing, but for the charge. 99, I don't know why I did 2, 99, and some number has to equal 0 and 101. So that missing number is going to have to be a 2. So again, mass of 4, charge of 2, that is an alpha particle. All right, last one. I got neon, atomic number 10, decaying into some, some particle, and then fluorine, so i got to take a look. 10 has to equal some number and 9. Well, that's going to tell me that I, I need a positive 1 there. And then 19 has to equal some number and 19. So that number is going to have to be 0. So, all right, I got some particle with a positive 1 charge and a mass of 0. Well, that's going to be a positron, right? It's going to be a positron. So let's take a look at this monster. The reason I chose this monster is because there is something going on right here. We have three neutrons on the product side, and you got to account for that. So if I'm looking at my mass, well, I got one neutron on my reactant side. I have 235 from the uranium. That has to equal 89 right here, plus some number, plus three because I have three neutrons each with a mass of one so let me do that math I got that's a two 236 equals 89 plus three plus some number so I gotta do that math now I got 92 and some number that's equal 236 so I subtract 92 from each side end up with 144 I hope as its mass and for this charge I do the same process so charge I got zero from that neutron here plus 92 from the uranium right here plus the 36 from the krypton not plus I'm sorry this is an equal sign I'm losing it 0 and 92 have to equal 36 and some number, and 3 times 0 is 0, so uh, 92 has to equal 36 and some number. So I do 92 minus 36, and I end up with, yeah, I'm doing it the long way, don't judge me, 56. So with a atomic number of 56, what element is that? Look it up on my periodic table, and it's barium. So there you go, that is the missing thing, that is X. So, summarize, can you write out and complete decay equations for natural and artificial transmutations? I sure hope so, and if not, you know, bring questions. I'll see you in class. Okay, bye.